All right, moving on to Friday, the Duke's Mayo Bowl kicking us off. We got Maryland taking on North Carolina State. Uh, this is basically a toss up game. Seeing North Carolina State slight one point favorites uh, and a pretty low total at 46 uh, or 46 and a half, depending on where you look. Uh, this is a really interesting game. I guess somewhat of a contrast in styles. You know, I, I, for most of the season, Maryland was led by their offense uh, with Taulia Tagovailoa, and, you know, defense could, you know, can be shaky. Uh, NC State is clearly a defense first team. Uh, they've had a lot of quarterback injury this year. Devin Leary went down, but really, even when he was healthy, I mean, this is just a, not a very good offense. You know, they've got they've had Jack Chambers, Ben Finley, MJ Morris, a lot of moving parts in this NC State offense, uh, and really none of it has worked. But very good defense. Uh, you know, the, the one thing I think NC State's going to be able to do in this game uh, is stop the run. I think Maryland's kind of overall rushing numbers are a bit inflated. Uh, there are some really bad run defenses in the Big Ten. It's no coincidence that when Maryland plays a team like Northwestern, for example, that, yeah, they're going to run the ball pretty well. But against some of the better rush defenses they faced in the Big Ten, uh, didn't really see that consistency from that Maryland running back core. It's the one thing that I can really trust NC State to do is stop the run with Peyton Wilson and guys of that nature. You know, the other really big red flag for Maryland down the course of the season was they could not buy Talia Tagovailoa time to throw. I mean, they consistently got beat up front. I think that's another area uh, where NC State, you know, can really get pressure on Tagovailoa. Uh, Maryland is not at full strength at wide receiver. So really, in summary, I think NC State's going to be able to get stops in this matchup, but they've played far worse defenses than Maryland this year, uh, and they have done nothing. I mean, 22 points against Virginia Tech, and that was a comeback victory in the fourth quarter. 20 points and a loss to Boston College, who was atrocious this year. Just 10 points against Louisville, 9 points against Syracuse. I mean, this is a bad NC State offense. Uh, it's either going to be MJ Morris or Ben Finley in this game. Finley's a little bit older, has played a little bit more. Uh, I think Morris is probably the higher upside guy, but I don't really think it matters. NC State is not very healthy at running back. They haven't been able to run the ball consistently all year. This is not an offense I want to be backing in any way, shape, or form. Even what you could argue could be a favorable matchup. I don't think there's one glaring strength of this Maryland defense. I also don't think they're so poor in any one area where I see some major edge uh, for North Carolina State. It's not just the quarterback thing that you know Leary's out and they haven't really found a consistent replacement. It's that they pair that with then not being able to run the football. So this is not an offense I want to back. I would lean towards the under. Uh, in this matchup, and maybe more specifically, a Maryland team total under. You're going to get that around you know, 22 and a half, 23. And you can't win up front like Maryland has struggled to do down the stretch of the season. And you're going up against this good of a run defense like NC State. I, I just see Maryland ha having to be very one-dimensional with Paolia Tagovailoa. I, I would also lean towards NC State as well. They have the better defense. Uh, and I don't think Maryland presents that tough of a test. Like I said, though, just cannot get to the window with this NC State offense. Ultimately going to be no play for me. I'd say my strongest lean in this game is probably that Maryland team total under, uh, but no action.